Okay, ready? Uh, okay. Uh, I hear you screaming, but I don't see you moving on my screen. Really? Shit. Well, mm. whatever. I'm Mike. You are Kevin. Is that how I'm supposed to do it? I don't know. You run this thing. I don't run anything. You? But yeah, I'm Mike from Game Clubs. This is Kevin. We played Metal Gear Solid 3. For, I don't even know what month. It was month. June. It was I know we're, we're super late, but it was June. It was June. Yeah, okay. So, you know, it's July now, but that's well, okay. Whatever. We have the – we're getting it together slowly. Yeah, but no, it was an awesome It was an awesome month. I think there was like a ton – it was a great game for what we do because there was a lot to talk about, so there were a lot of people like really kind of engaged that month, I think. I was way more into it than I thought I would ever be with the Metal Gear game. So. Well, because it's one of those love. It's like the um, Deadly Premonition. You know, it's like a love it or hate it game. I got PTSD from that. I'm not doing that again. We should, but like, even if you hate it, like, there's so much to hate, and if you love it, there's so much to love. So no matter what, there's a ton to talk about. No, that the Metal Gear was, it was a game I wanted to burn into the fires, and I thought Metal Gear was the most overrated series in the world until I absolutely fell in love with it. So us playing three set me off on a huge, like binge of Metal Gear. So I played three and then played two after that. No, I played three and then I played one then I played two and then I just finished four when I was on my work trip. I brought my PlayStation with me. And four I, you have to play. Um, I have it. It's just, you know, I got like a game or two that I gotta beat first. I'm in the middle. Yeah, no, but you need to play. I'll, I'll it's, play. It's, like, but they're all, they're all so good. So I mean, I kind of went older crazy after three. Um, After we played it with Game Clubs and it was awesome because i mean i just remember how much i love the series uh it's just a ton of fun i mean like once you get you have to be in the right mood because of all the cutscenes and because of the way that it's set up so that's the but once part you're that kind of you feel uncomfortable about continuing i'll get to it eventually but uh we have a list of questions from good old mark who i'll splice his face in here and hello youtube this is mt shark 7 here and Corey. Hey everyone. Uh, and we're going to run through them all so that way we have some kind of format to what we're doing for once because we're professionals. Getting there, I guess. No, I'm not. I didn't even put a real shirt on today. Whatever. So, again, so the way this is going to work, because I explained it already, is that me and Mike will answer it. Then I'm going to paste in Corey and Mark's face and their answers to each question. So the first thing we'll go for first is your expectations before and after the game. How would it be after if I expect it? I'll let you you go first because I have played it prior to playing it with the club. Deal. Expectations before this game. I thought this game was going to be stupid long. It was going to be made up 83% of cutscenes, and I was going to fall asleep while playing it. I like I know people love Metal Gear, but even after playing Metal Gear 1 and I liked the parts where I actually got to play, I was like, oh my God, these cutscenes are so fucking long. And the most of them... I know they're plot heavy, but most of them are nonsense. It's like I really like the film Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I'm like I don't fucking care, Snake. Well, those aren't, well, those aren't really, really cutscenes, cut though. No, but like those I, are, that's more like when you're saving. But like there was just so much stuff that like is filler, and I was just like, can we? This cutscene could be shortened down to like f four minutes, most guys. Come on, like which is why my fear of playing Metal Gear Four is because I know that has like what like uh, how long cutscenes like twenty four minutes or something. Yeah, yeah, so, so I, I... There's a weird echo now. Do you have that? How about now? Um, no. Well, yep. a little bit, but whatever. Well, fuck it. I have a microphone. Uh, I see your microphone. Is the echo going to be in the recording? No. Don't worry about it. You we sure. Okay. I, I am sure. Well, yeah, well, so Metal Gear Solid 4, I always used to make fun of having crazy long cutscenes, which it does. But having played it again recently... It's not nearly as long as I remember it being. But, like, they do trail off. Like you said, like, you could really benefit from some severe editing because a lot of the times it was better wherever you had the microphone a minute ago. But most of the time it, it's it's doable. There's just a few cutscenes that you just completely lose interest in. And I skipped all the way through the ending cutscene the second time I beat the game because I had already seen it and I had, like, no interest in watching it again. But most of the other cutscenes I watched, it's the ending one that I think is probably the worst because it's well over, I think, an hour and a half or two hours. I, can't, I have many things to do with my day. I can't be watching a, a, a cutscene with that. Yeah. 
Like, that, well, that was the issue with Snake Eater. I ended up skipping so many cutscenes that I eventually just read a plot synopsis because I was like, can I just play the game now? Okay, great. And they weren't that long in this game, but they were still like longer than they needed to be. So my expectations on that end kind of stayed true. Um, so I'm, I'm done so with my-, my expectations going into it were. I actually remembered it being shorter than it was. I thought it was because the first time I played it, I played it in one sitting. So I was like, this is going to be a pretty short game. One sitting? Yeah. Oh, I got a battery indicator. Nice. So, yeah, the the uh, first time I played it, I just kind of breezed through it. And I remember it being a shorter game. So I don't know why. It was like, okay, it's going to be short. And I remember the cutscenes being long, but like, you know, probably shortest in the series. Um, I remember the controls being a lot better than they were, and that was like a huge learning curve. That was some it, setting you picked, though, wasn't it? The... Back in no, no, it was just kind of the way it was on that. So I actually played it on the Vita, and I played it on the Xbox, and the Vita version for me was way better to play for whatever reason. I just found it easier to control. Hmm. It's weird, maybe because I'm used to like PlayStation control setup. I guess I don't know, but that was. So I was expecting it to be a little bit shorter. It ended up being a lot longer than I remember it. Um, and there was a lot more subtleties to the backstory I think I picked up than other than the first time I played the game, which was really nice to play through it and kind of remember all those or get a second, you know, input on all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I it was it, at first I was kind of like hating it, like, oh, man, I, I thought I remember this game being way better. And oh, then by, the end, the, game, by the end of the game, I was – Totally back into it. I don't know. I don't know what it is about this game where the introduction is slow and boring, and that is not how you hook somebody in. I gotta say, like, I think this is a lot to introduce. Like, it was a very ambitious game, especially for its time, with like the whole healing element and like the food consumption and stamina and all of that. So, I think they thought that they were doing a good job of introducing you to all of that, but it definitely kind of drags out. And there's a lot of um, like kind of Easter eggs and stuff like that. That's that's a lot of fun to find. Like as soon as I finished playing it, I, I kind of felt compelled to go back and play it again and unlock a ton more stuff. So you're committed to doing another replay then? Well, not committed, but you know what I mean. Of yeah, I, I mean I already started one. I just didn't get a chance to go through it a, a second time. But 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 yeah, but you know what's going on. Yeah. Let's move on down the list. But first, future me, cut in Corey and Mark's answers right here, please. I'm gonna go a different approach. I have two copies of this game. I have it for PS2, and I have the HD, like, downloaded version on the Vita. Now, with uh, with the whole move, I knew I wasn't going to get a whole lot of time to play video games. So I was like, I'm going to play it on the Vita instead of the PS2. Because one, the PS2 was already packed away. I didn't want to take it out. And I two, I figured, like, if it's on the Vita, I can just, like, play whenever I can, like, a little bit here, a little bit there, and I could beat the game. But, oh uh, yeah, that didn't happen. Because, I mean, I'll probably explain further, but for the most part, the controls just suck. It's horrible. I mean, I mean, just aiming is impossible with, like, the little nub on the Vita. It makes it ridiculously frustrating. And I don't know, I must, must not have had, like, aim assist on or something, because... I would shoot them like a, I'd be a pixel off and it would just zoom right by. It's like you had to be super accurate with shooting the guys. And the main thing, the main thing you had to be uh, proficient at is headshots. And I'm usually amazing at headshots with any game I play. But this one, yeah, it just was not happening, unfortunately. So I, what I expected was, you know being able to play the game and enjoy it, and it'll be easier. Unfortunately, the controls lacked on the Vita, and I just couldn't, I just couldn't beat it. It just, I mean, it just was horrible. It's just so frustrating, and yeah, I just couldn't get it. Um, this may be one of my only negatives. I expected this game to be, like, mind-blowing, just because when I played through 1 and 2, I mean, I did like them, but... Metal Gear Solid is definitely not one of my favorite series. It is fun, though. But everyone was like, oh, 3 is my favorite. It's the best. Um, it doesn't get better than 3, blah, blah, blah. Just wait till you play 3. So I went into 3 thinking that it was going to be like a 
Assassin's Creed 2 to or Assassin's Creed 1 to Assassin's Creed 2, Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2 type of thing. And it wasn't really that. Um, I kind of found myself enjoying 2 more than 3. Um, but it was a fun game, but that's the expectations. I expected this mind-blowing thing, and it wasn't that. It was still fun, but still. Thanks, buddy. How's the game hold up today? Your turn first, Mike, because I got a lot of stand there. I think it does. I think it easily does. Um, I got just as much enjoyment out of playing this the second time than I did when it launched. So I would say that it definitely does. Hmm. I... mm. Story-wise, gameplay-wise, yeah, game holds up. Uh, I don't mind Kojima's weird, artsy-fartsy storytelling methods. But goddamn, those controls. Holy shit. (laughs) Like... But once you got them, though, like they weren't bad. They're just convoluted, and they are different. Like they There's... weren't because they they functioned. Once you learned how to control the game, they function. They, if they function. were broken. The whole game would be like impossible. But the game gets easier as you play it because you kind of learn how to play it. You well, know, they function like on a on paper. They function fine. Like the buttons do what they need to do. But that first part where you're crossing over that bridge and I was leaning on an edge, my first instinct would not be press triangle or Y or whatever. But that's not the button I would press. It just design wise, I, my first instinct is either hit the stick to where I was or hit the jump button, which there's not really a jump button in Metal Gear, but or the, the some kind of action button that it's just not the button I would pick, you know, and I get the like when it comes to combat, the controls are bad on purpose. I understand that. Because you're not supposed to get in fights. But you're gonna. Yeah. It's just what, how it's gonna be. The problem is, when I need to be in a fight, in a boss fight, the controls completely work against you. And big issue for me. So I was kind of hoping... Did you play? I played on normal, because okay. this, this control scheme fucked with me. I couldn't do it. But, like, when I'm in a boss fight, like, I, I can't be doing these weird, weird controls. Like, unfortunately, I still have to use them. So, when I when I thought playing the HD version, I was going to have way better controls, but I did not. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, well, you, you were over my house when we were doing the like let's play of it yeah. on the Xbox, and we were both struggling with the controls. Um, but I I don't know, I because at first I was bashing on it, but I, I got over it. Um, I still I can't figure why yours was like left stick to stab, and mine was like hold square. I can't. Yeah, there was some weird controls set up. I don't know if that's only the 360 version either, because I played on PS3, but I, I can't figure it out. Mm. Who knows? All right, Mark, Corey, faces over here. I don't know if I can answer that since I played the HD version. I mean, I have been playing a lot of PS2 games as of late, like the last couple months. So I would say so. Like I don't really, I don't really have any problems. You know, playing PS2 games, like, I'm like, oh, these graphics are so 2001 or 2000, whenever the PlayStation 2 came out. I'm not, like, I'm not like that. I'm like, eh, it's a game. I can still play it. So, um, I would say, yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's a valid answer since I played the HD on the Vita, but again, I wouldn't expect any uh, less coming from the actual ps2 version um it definitely could use a a remake the the controls are really bad the um the graphics aren't great but it's still fun so i guess you could say it does hold up if that kind of stuff doesn't bother you um like kevin was saying at one time i think the controls are meant to be bad to force you to play slower to force you to sneak instead of just going guns blazing kind of like the old uh, resident evil games next up Thoughts about the storyline? Well, um, there's a lot to say about that. We got we to gotta condense this um, one. Well, that's just... Well, I mean, that's just Kojima. There's, like, craziness that it can be as simple, sort of, on the surface as you want to let it be. And then the further you read into it, and then especially when you start layering on the other games and the events of some of the other games, and it just gets, like, wait, what? I mean, like, there are some really good synopsis videos on YouTube I still think it's a two-hour one. You need to watch because it, it makes everything that much better and it makes everything make sense. But 
I, I the, got two hours of my life to go. No, away. I know, I, but it's it's better than playing. Not better than, but it's a good substitute than playing all the games, and even better addition to playing all the games because there's no way you're going to catch everything. I'm gonna play about your yeah. first time playing through them. Yeah, because there's just so much that he likes. So the story is a really good story. I think that it's more complicated than it needs to be, and I think there's kind of like two layers to the story. There's just kind of what you see on the surface of that particular game, and then there is where Metal Gear Solid 3 falls in relation to all of the other games, and it actually is, like, one of the most important, if not... Well, it's the, it's the beginning of the series. Most so. important, the story. Yeah, it is. For the, and, and it makes... And obviously, beginnings are always important, but it makes so much... It makes sense of a lot of the stuff that happens in the later games. Because the later games, consequently, some of them are before Metal Gear Solid 3 in release order... Um, don't give you just they just assume somehow that you know these things which they know that you don't know that you'll find out later when they make this game and it kind of pieces it all together i always wonder if uh, kojima had this written from the get-go or he's just you know miraculously making it as he goes along which i kind of feel like there's a mix of the two it's it's very complex and like i said with the cutscenes being so long it's hard to follow it all but like, yeah, you lose the, interest when you stop paying attention. It's hard. It's like all the extra shit. That's 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 the problem I have with it. Is like it, there's all this unnecessary side stuff that makes the story complicated. Because essentially, all it is is guy, a girl from the U.S. defected. Yo, can you stop her from helping the bad guys? That'd be great. And like, it, it can be, It's very simple at its core. There's just a. Whole but that's not. That's not it though. I'm giving a very brief synopsis of it. I mean, I know it's like nuclear weapons and Metal Gear, all that. So, like, but she didn't defect. Yeah. Well, she defected to – how do I even explain it? She didn't well, really – mission... So, like, yeah. <laughs> it's just like – so, like, the mission changed once um, Sokolov – no, what's, what's the guy's name? Volgan nuked Russia, and then they need a scapegoat. So she became the scapegoat for the U.S. as a defector. So um, they, they didn't look like they were in trouble. So that when Snake went and killed her, which he had, I mean, I guess, spoiler alert, when Snake kills the boss, there's no way that they were going to convince Russia or the world that the U.S. didn't nuke Russia unless they had some sort of like, you know, oh, it was this rogue agent that did it and we killed her as a consequence. So like no matter what, she was going to die, even though she didn't do it. She knew. Um, and she that was the only, yeah. And then, so like, then that's kind of like the whole thing that shape shapes snakes or the big, big bosses, um, like mentality after the game is that she's like the greatest Patriot that the U S ever had. And which is um, why the, the ending is so good because is everyone there congratulating Snake, but he's just like, I want to fucking kill you all. Yeah, because he knows that they all yeah. did this to him, you know, and did this yeah. to the boss. And, yeah. It's fucked up, really. Like, And what gets worse is the further that you get in the story, once you start playing all the way, like, through Metal Gear Solid 4, you realize that Zero is, like, the ultimate bad guy of the series, and he's the one that's, like, the major... It's Metal Gear Solid 3, so he's kind of, like, the guy that you're reporting to, and he's, like, actually the really big bad guy. So long story short, short, short. The story is great, but fucking hard to follow. It is incredibly hard to follow. I don't. And actually, side note before we go on to the next question, I have an issue when games have more lore in the, like out of the game than in the game. Like all these Halo books and shit like that. I'm like, why do I need this? Just let me play the game, and I should be good with that. I thought the storyline was great in the game. It was a little dragged out, which I'll get to in the next. Or... Next, next uh, question. But, yeah, I really like the storyline. I like how they, with the Metal Gear Solid, they combine, like, fact and fiction, like, in, in a nice blend, I guess, an even blend. But it's really cool. I like, I definitely enjoy the characters. They're, all, they're always memorable. And it's just hilarious, the storyline. Oh, my God. Like, I was just, like, shaking my head at a lot of scenes. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone. I'm just going to say, hey, stupid computer started almost, uh, went to sleep there. I guess, um, the video's boring. Well, fuck you. Anyway, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I like the storyline. I thought it was good. A uh, very strange storyline. Metal Gear has always been kind of strange to me, storyline-wise. And I've never really liked the whole political aspect of it. As much as I like to... I don't really like debating politics. It just kind of happens. But uh, a little too political for me. But I do like the characters. Interesting character development. Um, the relationship between Snake and... Whatever that chick's name was, I forgot. Blonde chick. It was interesting. Um... The relationship between Boss and Snake and Boss and that girl is interesting. And all the, uh, all the, all the bosses were really interesting too. They were all really weirdos. They're huge weirdos. What's about the level design? Um, good. Not great. It's definitely been better in, uh, other Metal Gears. I think but Gear it's a nice departure from, like, after playing Metal Gear Solid 2, everything was indoors and it was very difficult to sort of sneak around. Hmm. It was nice jumping to like an outdoor environment. Yeah, uh, I didn't really know where to go a lot. I used the walkthrough a lot. Um, for a while, I thought the dot in my map was where to go, but that was just north. It just happened for the first half of the game. That's where I had to go. Um, not very clear where to go, but you know, I, I have no shame in looking at a walkthrough. That's me. Well, it's about the level design. I like the level. I thought some of the levels were rather long. Like they really didn't have to be. Kind of like the story I was. Brian Dragdale, the level design was kind of like, oh, I really have to do this? Like, this is ridiculous. Just doing, like, going here and hiding, stealth killing, and then you attack them, like, I don't know, just basically just rinse and repeat. And a lot of it, I don't know. I think they could have made it less boring, like, just by combining it, I guess, making, I don't know, doing something else with the whole levels, like, more areas, I yeah, I said more areas would be nice. Um, a little bit straightforward, even though I got, I got lost a lot for this game to be so straightforward. I don't know why, and it seemed like I wasn't the only one. Um, the cave level can suck it. I don't like that one. That one annoyed me. Uh, what could the game improve upon? I don't know. Your your low battery thing is gonna freak you out. Uh, what could it be improved the problem? Like editing. No, what can be improved on Metal Gear Solid 3? What can who improve on Metal Gear Solid 3? What could the game improve upon? For me, like, example, the fucking controls. Yeah, I would say the controls and editing. Well, the control, oh, no, oh, that was part of your answer, sorry. Uh, the controls and then how to navigate the game. Because, again, didn't really know where to go a lot of the times. Um, so just a little, like... It's not my open world game, as long as, like, hey, go here eventually, but still, you know, you have fun messing around. I don't know. That's that. What the game could improve upon? Well, as I mentioned just not too long ago, I'd say improvement on level design. Add maybe a few extra areas just to spice things up. Also, um, don't drag out the story as long as it is dragged out. I mean, just keep the players interested, because you're like, oh, I mean, it's interesting, but then after a while, I'm just like, are we done here? Can I play? Like, and I know with, uh, I know with both of them, like, you can't skip the cutscenes, or, so you're basically forced to watch it, so that's kind of annoying as well. Uh, what could the game improve upon? Um, better controls? I would say better visuals, but... I mean, it was a PS2 game, like, you can only do so much, so you'd have to ask for a remake at that point. Um, I think the story could be more streamlined rather than play five minutes and then get this, like, super long, dull, drawn-out, like, political talking as your cutscenes. It could be more, more entertaining, I guess, I don't know. What did the game excel at? Well, the storytelling, obviously. Yeah, I would say I kind of like that. That's what really kind of keeps you going. And then all of the hidden kind of either Easter eggs or unlockables or things that kind of like really challenge you to make it through without being detected. Like there's a lot of good things to kind of go back for. And the uh, as even though I bitch about the controls, I will say that made the situations more tense. Kind of like how the old Resident Evils, the bad controls were like, oh, fuck, what do I do? What do I do? So yeah. It yeah. kind of works, and I get that, like I said, I know they're bad on purpose, but I could live without it. 
Yeah, because I'd have to say, like, once you go to play four and like in five, five especially when the controls are like on par with any third person shooter, mm-hmm. like the the tension tension isn't really on when you get caught. It's more so just depending on what your rank you want to get. Because if you want to shoot your way through the game, it's not shoot. No. <laughs> You know, so with the other ones, like you said, when the controls are a lot harder, you don't want to get caught because it's like you're, you have a good chance of not getting through a firefight. No, I and well, the thing is, like, I I don't mind killing everybody in these games, but my my walk of shame in this game was like an hour long. <laughs> I killed. I told everybody. you about that. I told you, but I didn't tell you what was going to happen. I said that there's like a consequence for. Yeah, no, I didn't know the consequence. Literally a consequence, like. That was awful. Like, the first time I played the game, I think I killed, like, everyone, and it was, like, an hour-long walk. Yep, I, I literally sat there with the, the stick up, and I was just like, yeah, here we go. Did you know that's 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 what was accounted for, is how many people you'd killed? Nope. And then I still and demanded like, to kill everybody why? else in the game. So, I don't even Well, I mean, after that, it doesn't matter. No, I choke everybody out. Um, with the game excelled at, I would say the storyline, even though I did say, I knew I said it to Dragdale, but I I would say the storyline. I mean, the characters were real, really memorable. I mean, it's, there's a lot of cheesiness in the game, which adds adds um, to its uh, fun factor, I guess you could say. What did this game excel at? What did this game excel at? I don't know. It should have excelled at stealth gameplay, but. Going from Splinter Cell, like the good Splinter Cell's not conviction, to this made me think this wasn't as good of a stealth game, although I didn't do that much stealth in this game. I went guns blazing, not gonna lie. So that's that's probably one of the reasons why I didn't like it as much as I should have. But I did enjoy it, I do like this game, I'm not gonna say it's bad. So I guess we'll finish up with our final thoughts before Mike's battery dies. So Mike, take it away. Uh, I think it's an awesome game. I think that if you haven't played a Metal Gear, it's a, apart from Metal Gear Solid Five, well, I would say it's probably one of the best ones to start with, just because it, chronologically and it, even though the controls aren't great, it's more edited than some of the other ones as far as cutscenes. Even though it doesn't feel that way, it's just a good. It's a good piece of gaming. Like it's a really, really good game. It's got a phenomenal story, and it kind of really flushes out like a character that they always talk about in all the other games that kind of makes the rest of them mean a little bit more. The, um, if I, this game and Persona 4 to me have the same issue where I fucking hated them in the beginning because they didn't start fast enough and I wanted to get into things and it didn't introduce things well. Uh, and then I fell in love with it. So it made up for it in the end, but if people didn't tell me to keep pushing that this game was great, I, I was going to throw it down. Honestly. But you had, you did end up liking it though. I did end up liking it, but you can't give me tell me oh in two hours it's going to be great. I have things to do in two hours. No, you know? you've got to be. This is a big game. Like this is right. like time sink. To, this it's not an RPG, but it, you're, you need a commitment. No, if if it wasn't for a thing like game clubs, I'm not self promoting. I wouldn't. I would have put it this down. I would have picked this up and go. Metal Gear's overrated as fuck, and then I would have put it down and never touched another Metal Gear again. So, I guess. Good for game clubs. And final thoughts. Huh? Game was fine. I think if they if were a, I, th- I don't know. I must have screwed up on the, the HD version. There has to be some way to control that a lot easier. Um, oh, before I do that, I want to go back to what the game could improve upon. Uh, they definitely needed a map, kind of like what they had in Metal Gear Solid to show where the enemies were and what their field of vision was because like not knowing that made the game like so much more difficult and i was playing on normal and it's just such a pain in the ass it's so frustrating like even the camera angle sucked i couldn't see what the hell was in front of me i ended up bumping in the guys i didn't even know they like hey there he is i'm like what the fuck i don't even know where the hell i am how do you know where i'm at like it's ridiculous so yeah, that's, I guess got, that could blend in my, my final thoughts. It would be better if they had that like heads up display in the corner. They had plenty of room for it, so I don't know why they took that away. Between because I know Metal Gear Solid came out before that, so I don't know. It just makes no sense. 
I mean, they could at least do something, at least like maybe like an audible thing. I know uh, one Splinter Cell game did that. They had like an audible, like when an enemy was close, it would get like kind of tense. The music would get tense because they didn't have that either. Like you could say, oh crap, let me know where the hell, let me look around here. So yeah, so that's my final thoughts. And also like, yeah, definitely the controls definitely need to be improved. Um, final thoughts. That was my final th my final thoughts. Um, I think shelve this game. Definitely get it because you can play it again. There's different ways to kill different bosses and, uh, and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's what I think. <laughs>